the gears of the COG were equipped with signature weapons throughout their conflicts against the UIR, the Locust Horde and the Lambent. Many of their weapons were also stolen and used by the Locust Horde to wipe out many gears with their own manufactured weapons. So as always, I'm your host Abs, and here is a full breakdown of the COG weapons in Gears of War lore. The COG's standard issue shotgun was the Nasher, a short barreled stockless, lever action military shotgun that was very reliable for the gears in close quarters combat. It did lack the necessary range of rifles, but it packed devastating power, being able to gib many locust forces into a shower of blood and gore. The Nasher originated in the COG, but a common theme as you will see in this video will be the ultimate effect of weapons falling into the hands of the Locust Horde. So for the Nasher shotguns, they also fell into the hands of the aggressive Locust Shock Troopers, the Locust Grenadiers, who used the Nasher to deadly effect against the COG in close quarters combat. The Lancer Mark I, or also known as the Retro Lancer, this was the predecessor to the iconic Lancer Mark II that was equipped with the chainsaw bayonet. The Retro Lancer was the extremely powerful main assault rifle used by the COG against the UIR in the Pendulum Wars. The Retro Lancer was effective against the Indies and therefore the weapon saw very few modifications during the war since it was a reliable weapon in a wide range of climatic conditions. The bayonet was effective against human enemies but as the Locust War commenced on Emergence Day, the Gears soon found out the hard way that their bayonets couldn't penetrate the Locust's thick hides, causing the bayonet to deflect away or snap off as a whole. The Retro Lancer had a slower fire rate and massive recoil, with a low ammunition count, so this made the Gears very vulnerable in quick and violent close quarter combat attacks from the Locust troops. In the words of Marcus Phoenix, these blades are fucking useless, we need something that actually cuts these assholes. So this nicely leads us to the Lancer Mark II. Shortly after E-Day, during a battle, Tai Kaliso improvised by using a nearby power saw to shred and kill a locust soldier. So Marcus Phoenix discussed the idea with his father, Professor Adam Phoenix, and soon after, the Mark II Lancer assault rifle was developed, incorporating more accurate fire less recoil, a reticle sight, and a devastating chainsaw bayonet, but at the cost of lower firepower compared to the Mark I. Therefore, the Retro Lancer was 90% completely phased out over a year later, and most COG battalions were outfitted with the new Lancer. Now I'm not gonna lie, there is a slight bit of confusion with the Lancer Mark II's origins. Now this is ultimately because of Gears of War judgement, which took place during the destruction of Halvor Bay, only six weeks after Emergence Day. In the game, they are seen with Lancer Mark IIs, but this was earlier than when Ty and Marcus brought forward the idea of the Lancer Chainsaw Bayonet. But I'm guessing that this was done in Gears Judgment for gameplay purposes. Moving on to the satellite based orbital laser by the name of the Hammer of Dawn, it was first used as a strategic weapon as a deterrent by forcing politicians to rethink their decisions, but would eventually be forced to become a tactical weapon for asset denial and tactical operations in the Locust War, as the Locust quickly advanced on the cog capital of Aphira. The Hammer of Dawn counter-attack burnt 90% of Sera, killing almost every Locust or human that was still on the surface and outside of Jacinto city limits. It was an extremely destructive weapon, but one drawback of the weapon would be that it could only be used to paint a target only if there were clear skies overhead. At times there would only be minutes or seconds of satellite coverage, and in war that can be the difference between life and death. The COG's high caliber, single shot bolt action sniper rifle was known as a long shot, able to do lethal damage per hit. The long shot originated way back in the Pendulum Wars, as the COG used these sniper rifles to counter the UIR's GZ-18 Marksa rifle. The long shot shifted the rules of combat drastically, allowing a skilled sniper to remain uninjured or even unseen during firefights. Able to inflict critical damage 
to anyone unfortunate enough to be hit by a long shot round. A headshot would cause the head to burst into smithereens. Unfortunately though, the long shot sniper rifles also found their way into locust hands. Therefore, the specialised locust drone class known as the locust snipers had emerged, able to cause brutal damage to the gears from long range. The gears were also equipped with a standard issue combat knife for close quarters combat melee situations. It wasn't as useful on the locust due to their thick hides as the retro lancer bayonets were an attached combat knife that could be taken off but of course didn't have a good success rate against the locust forces. Due to the lancer chainsaw bayonet it kind of made the combat knife redundant in melee combat but the combat knife could always have been useful for other situations. But Dom and other commandos had a specific commando knife, also known as the fighting knife. The core commandos were given these knives as part of a sign of their completion of training and to use in the field, with Dom being very proud to earn his commando knife. Dom was always seen to have the knife in a holster on his armour during the games, but after Dom had unfortunately died, Marcus took it upon himself to personally put an end to the Locust Queen by stabbing her with Dom's commando knife. Hoffman received a machete during the Pendulum Wars. This was a machete used by the Pisanga Gears. They were from the country of Pisang and had a great reputation. This was used by the Pisanga Gears to defend themselves and their womenfolk. The standard primary sidearm for the COG was the MX-8 snub pistol. It lacked the range and power but the snub's quick fire rate made it reliable in certain situations. While most gears continued to use the snub pistol, some gears were known to loot and use bolt up pistols from the fallen locust as they were impressed by the gun's power and design. However, many gears still continued to use the snub pistol for its high rate of fire and higher ammo capacity. Even Chairman Prescott carried one to protect himself whenever he was in danger. A heavy hand cranked Gatlin gun manufactured by the COG was the Mulcher. This was a scaled down version of a chain gun. It possessed phenomenal firepower and a fire rate fast enough to keep an entire platoon pinned down. For refined firing, the user can deploy the Mulcher's base, turning it into a mobile turret with a 180 degree field of fire. Many Mulchers fell into the hands of the Locust and therefore the specialised Boomer class of Locust, the Locust Grinders, would rotate the crank and fire at will to suppress against COG soldiers until it overheated, unleashing heavy unrelenting damage on the gears. The COG had a man operated mortar in order to keep foes pinned down and deal with large amounts of enemies at once. The highly explosive cluster shells would rain down along the mortar's firing line, scattering a series of bomblets on enemies. The effect the mortar had on enemy morale was dramatic as enemies would flee for cover rather than being caught in the blast radius and if they don't they were likely to be killed if not seriously wounded. The mortars were designed and built by the COG but the Locust Horde managed to salvage some mortars and made use of them whenever they could. Locust drones and snipers were seen to be using them. The Scorcher was a portable flamethrower able to gush a stream of flames that would damage and set enemies ablaze literally scorching them to death, hence the weapon's name. The Scorcher was a very deadly close combat weapon with its continuous spraying of flames. The Scorcher is also the most accurate weapon to blind fire and has a psychological side effect of inducing fear and panic in enemies at close range. The Scorcher was also compatible with a backpack fuel tank that increased the fuel capacity but this would be vulnerable to damage due to their flammability and would explode if it was lit up with gunfire. The Scorcher weapons that found their way into Locust hands led to the specialised classes of Flame Drones, Flame Grenadiers and even Flame Boomers. These units wore specialised helmets and backpack fuel tanks. An extremely deadly lever action recoilless heavy sniper rifle was the one shot. It had an incredible range and was known for its prominent laser sight and lethality. One round from this gun was able to explode larger locust units like the reapers and maulers 
and turned them into a shower of blood and gore. The weapon really did live up to its name. The Locust were also eventually able to use this devastating weapon. But the only problem with this weapon is that it had a long reload time and the visible laser while aiming could always give away the operator's position, giving the opposition the window of opportunity to return fire and kill the operator. Next we have the Sword of Shotgun, a double barreled lethal shotgun that packed enough power to kill multiple enemies or even larger enemies at point blank range with a single shot. This was due to it being able to fire both barrels simultaneously. Now it was only mainly effective at point blank range, but unfortunately the sword off shotgun had a painfully slow reload time and therefore would leave the operator very vulnerable during this time. The cog had the mounted heavy Gatlin gun known as the chain gun. It was usually seen on vehicles, however it could also be used as a stationary emplacement gun on fortifications for defence. Because of the gun's size and mass, it was far too big to be moved by any soldier. Therefore, whenever not on a vehicle, it was a mounted defensive gun. But the cog had a slower rate of fire auto cannon by the name of the twin barrel turret. Installed for defensive purposes and it used two barrels that alternated shots to allow them to cool and each barrel received its own separate belt of ammunition. After a prolonged period of firing, it became temporarily inoperable while it cooled down, and this turret was actually used by both the COG and the UIR. The gears also used RPGs in the Pendulum Wars, used in a variety of ways to cause heavy amounts of damage, including being used as anti-vehicle weapons. Another Gatlin gun used by the gears was the Vulcan. Now this was an extremely heavy weapon and therefore required two coordinated gears to use the Vulcan effectively, being able to shred locust forces like the boomers to bits in the blink of an eye due to its ferocious fire rate. As Marcus would say, nothing but bits. A speciality weapon used by the gears was the tripwire crossbow. This would fire an explosive charge equipped bolt that would stick to surfaces and would emit an infrared tripwire beam. Although when you shoot an enemy directly, the bolt would stick to the enemy and could be used as a moving mine. The COG used the designated marksman rifle in the Pendulum Wars, or more commonly known as DMR of course, providing a good balance between fire rate and accuracy, being a great middle ground between the long shot and the rifles, being used to often counter the Marxer MK1 marksman rifle of the UIR. Delta Squad's Jack Robot was equipped with a Zapper stun gun towards the end of the Locust War. Baird had modified Jack to finally be able to become an offensive asset to Delta Squad, becoming an even more important asset as they fought their way to free Adam Phoenix to finally put an end to the Locust War. Just like the Locust, the COG also used frag grenades or bolo grenades to deadly effect. It has seen different iterations in its design throughout the years, but during the Locust War they were extremely valuable to the gears as they were able to be thrown into and close emergence holes. A grenade used by the COG's Onyx Guard were the beacon grenades. After being thrown, the beacon would allow allies to spot enemies with a radar holographic display. Spotted enemies could be spotted through walls and other hard surfaces. The COG medics and the Onyx Guard used stim gas grenades to heal or revive downed teammates. This was a grenade that released a blue cloud of gas called stim. A toxic gas grenade manufactured by the New Hope Research Facility as a failsafe against Patient Zero Ukon was the cytostatic gas grenade. Made from two chemicals, fluorocyl and RZ50, a toxic gas that could melt flesh in a near instant. This would be used specifically to counter Ukon's accelerated healing effects. A non-lethal grenade used by the COG however were the smoke grenades, basically living up to its name, discharging a thick grey smoke that obscured the vision of anyone inside or looking outside the cloud of smoke. 
an improvised incendiary device used by the Gears during the Pendulum Wars were the Molotov Cocktails. These would be used by the Gears to take out the UIR's Paria tanks by tossing the Molotov Cocktails into the tank's air vent and lighting the tank on fire. A weapon of mass destruction that predated the Hammer of Dawn network was the light mass missile. These missiles drew on the near limitless power of emulsion and were considered to be one of the COG's most dangerous weapons. There were different yields of the missile, but generally the light mass missile would require a targeting beacon and a remote control in order to launch. It would draw power from refined emulsion and upon detonation would release a crazy amount of heat. The missile was accompanied by a cluster of smaller missiles that broke off before detonation for maximum impact. Just like the light mass missile, the light mass bomb was created from refined emulsion. It is a bomb, but it functioned as a cluster of highly explosive guided missiles. A very destructive weapon when used effectively, as evidenced through the light mass offensive, as Delta Squad deployed the light mass bomb to destroy the outer hollows. But to be used effectively, the light mass bomb required an immense amount of data on the area between the launch point and targets in order to guide the individual projectiles. The COG used ball turrets to defend important buildings such as fortresses or bunkers. These were series of large defensive spherical turrets that had a full 360 degree coverage of fire. The ball turrets were autonomous and ran on a complex computer system. The ball turrets were a huge asset for the COG during the Pendulum Wars. Another defensive unit that the COG used to defend their fortifications and in placed bunkers against the UIR was a defense missile system. This was a series of extremely large missile artillery batteries. The weapon's missile ammunition is stored in an underground storage connected to a bunker which provides protection against counter battery fire. The missile turret covered a 360 degree ground to air coverage and could hold up to 12 missiles at a time. The size of the missiles made them exceptionally dangerous to armoured vehicles, but the missiles weren't always accurate. The COG and UIR both used torpedoes to sink any type of naval vessel, from simple merchant ships to warships. They were used in explosive fashion by submarines and some warships, and there were no ways to counter an active torpedo, other than making it hit another object that was in the way. The blowtorch or repair tool was a handy device used to repair fortifications and turrets. The blonde genius Baird would often be seen to carry the blowtorch. The gears had many ammunition crates, whether they were boxes, magazines or cases, providing ammunition for the majority of the weapons manufactured by the COG. Propane tanks were used by the COG as dangerous makeshift explosives during the Pendulum Wars. They were also used after Emergence Day by the Gears as well as the Stranded. For the Stranded, it was an alternative fuel source or to use them as explosive traps. But for the Gears, it was used to light the tanks up to provide light to avoid being eaten alive by the Krill. And finally, for the COG weapons, we'll circle all the way back to Emulsion with the targeted radiation weapon, which was the emulsion countermeasure weapon. Created by Professor Adam Phoenix, this was created to destroy emulsion cells and to stop the lambent pandemic that was spreading across Sera. The humans were ultimately successful in activating the weapon. The lambent were vaporized by the emulsion countermeasure, while the locust were neutralized and forced into evolution due to emulsion being in their genetic code. And that, my friends, is a full breakdown of the COG weapons in Gears of War lore. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this lore video. If you want to support me and the channel further, you can also become a channel member, and that would be very appreciated as well, and thank you for your support as always. I'm your host Abs, and I will catch you guys next time.